Welcome back to Bluegrass this beautiful Memorial Day morning. Charlotte and I are out with Juniper and we're working on preparing Juniper for the fact that she has a new baby at home. Uh, and uh, <laughs> we also have a little helper out here. What's, what's our helper's name, Charlotte? Caroline. Caroline, okay. So Charlotte, Caroline, and I are gonna help Juniper and one other dog uh, prepare for the fact that they have a new baby uh, in the household. <laughs> Let's go. So very first things first, guys. Uh, this video is kind of directed towards uh, husbands, right? Okay, so look, <laughs> we have a saying around my kennel, and that saying is that only moms have dogs. And, you know, the husband a lot of times will pick the dog, or sometimes the dogs will be picked for the children or whatever. But when it comes to doing the work, uh, kind of only moms have dogs. <laughs> and we need to change that around, guys. We need to, you know, we need to step up, and we need to make sure that we're going to have a successful transition uh, for the baby into the home and make sure that the puppy doesn't end up catching a lot of flack, okay? Because kind of here's what happens, right? Uh, with young dogs, you can pretty much track down any misbehavior uh, by looking at just a few key areas. Uh, number one, uh, like a, a, a lack of exercise, right? You know how I'm always talking about uh, a tired dog is a good dog, right? Number two, uh, lack of attention. Okay, and lack of exercise and lack of attention kind of go together, right? Because you get busy, you get kind of too busy to exercise the dog, and then when you get a little bit too busy to exercise the dog, uh, you obviously are too busy to pay attention to them, okay? Now, and then the third thing is residual stress in the household. So lack of exercise, lack of attention, and stress in the household, uh, that equals, you know, dogs that misbehave a little bit. Come on, babies. And when I say dogs that misbehave a little bit, uh, let's not put it all on the dog, Okay, let's think about those three areas, uh, you know, synergistically. Lack of exercise and lack of attention generally indicates that you're busy, okay? Now, when you're busy, uh, being busy causes you to be stressed. And when you're stressed, the threshold that you consider misbehavior changes. Okay, and what I mean by that is the things that a dog did on, say, a Monday that didn't bother you, then all of a sudden, uh, on a Wednesday, they do bother you because you had a bad day at traffic, you had a bad day at work, or in the case of having a new baby, maybe the baby's not sleeping through the night. Okay, so we have to think about those three areas and how we're going to prepare uh, for the fact that those three things are going to be present, especially the first year that you have a new baby, right? Okay, so uh, Charlotte, come over here and let's talk about preparing. First thing I want you guys to do is I want you to get on a really good exercise uh, schedule with your puppy. The best thing that you can do to help a young mom uh, with a baby is to help regulate this dog's energy, right? The worst thing in the world is to have a dog whose energy is peaking at the time you need a baby to be napping. It's that simple. Uh, if I could just give any of you moms any real advice here, uh, you know, baby-wise. Baby-wise the babies and baby-wise the dogs, right? Put them on a schedule. The best way to ensure that your child sleeps and your dog sleeps is with the judicious use of uh, exercise, okay? So I want you guys to start thinking about how you're going to exercise the dog. And while you're exercising the dog, I want you to watch and notice how you can manipulate the dog into having really good manners. This dog, she's only been here to kennel for a few days. And uh, so she still gets a little excited when Charlotte's out here and wants to jump and carry on. So before I went to make this video, I went ahead and took this dog on a big walk out in my pre-adventure area and I made her really tired. That way I was guaranteed that she wasn't going to jump up on the stroller and she wasn't going to give Charlotte a hard time. Now what I'm not going to get right here is I'm not going to get a dog that's full of energy and just going, oh my, look how fancy my obedience is. But what I am going to get is a dog that's very compliant. Okay. Now I want you fellas to do this. I want you to get you a notebook and I want you to sit down with your wife and I want you to make a list of all the things that's required for new baby care, right? And it's not a lot of stuff, right? I mean, you just got to feed them and you got to change their diapers and you got to take them outside and get fresh air. And sometimes you have to hold them and cuddle them and burp them. And sometimes you got to rock them. And then I got one pro tip for you, for you fellas like me, <laughs> that I'm going to save for the end of the video, guaranteed to put a fussy baby to sleep. Okay, but I want you to make an actual list. And then every day, I want you to go out in the world and I want you to recruit somebody, just some child in your neighborhood, to help you work through this list. So in my list, I know that my wife is going to have to, she's going to have to hold the baby. So hold that baby. So I'm going to recruit some little child. Now, here's the neat thing. If I go out in any neighborhood and I say, hey, listen, I've got a new baby. There's a little girl in the neighborhood. And I'm like, hey, i got a new baby coming to my house and I'm trying to train my dog so it's really, really good when it gets home. Would you help me? Sure. Of course. 
They would all love to help you. It's a 360 degree win. The dog wins because he gets a lot of attention. The child wins because they get to play baby dolls and they get to help train a dog. And you win because you're pawning off a little bit of the labor on the kids next door. And you're guaranteed that you're gonna help your wife not be so, uh, you know, like, like fussy with you when the new baby's around. Okay, so here's the kinds of things that we would do. Okay, so I'm gonna give this child two things. I'm gonna give them a marker, a clicker, right? Now, this is, this is, there's no substitute for this, guys. This right here is really important, and I'll get to why, okay? But you can't substitute, like, marker training with a word. So what we're going to do is I'm going to give this child a clicker, and I'm going to give her a leash. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, hey, look, I want you to think about whenever this dog is being calm, attentive, and polite, okay? And I want you to push that button. That's all you got to do. I'm going to teach this dog to read your mind. Okay, so whenever you think this dog is being calm, attentive, and polite, I want you to push that button and I'll pay the dog for you. Okay. So I'm making this a net positive for this dog, right? I'm making the fact that maybe she's getting walked by another person, because this is what's going to happen at your house when you have a new baby. People are going to come over. Some of the people, they might be really old, they might be in a wheelchair, some of them might be really young. Okay, so we're going to take and we're going to get this dog out and we're going to put the leash in a lot of people's hands. And I'm going to put that uh, clicker on a lot of people and that lets the dog know it's play, that this child's playing the game where the child's looking for calm and polite behavior, polite behavior, right? And I don't even, I, you know, I don't want to send this kid home smelling like uh, dog food, right? So she's just going to click, right? Let that dog know that I'm happy, right? And then I am going to pay the dog. So now I'm also getting the dog used to me as the dad like holding the baby, right? Because a lot of you dads say the same things, right? Like, oh, well, that dog minds me. All right, so fine, whatever, okay. There's gonna be a lot of people at your house. There's gonna be a new baby at your house. Your wife is gonna be physically and mentally exhausted. And there's just gonna be a lot of coming and going. Gotta have to go uh, out and take the stroller, take the baby. Okay, so just the fact that the dog minds you, okay, that's not what we're after. We're using the fact that the dog maybe minds you and you're willing to exercise the dog to put the dog in a good position. So I pre-fatigue the dog, the dog is tired. I know it's not gonna jump on Charlotte. I know it's not gonna jump up here and try to bite on this baby. Okay, and then we're gonna go out and we're just gonna do our general basic obedience obedience training, okay? So I've got a baby, and I'm gonna say, all right, we use a very simple vocabulary around here. Come, let's go help Easy Weight and Stay. Can you remember that? Yep. Okay, so we're gonna walk this little course. You can have whatever little course you want to at your house, and you talk to that dog and influence that dog. Whenever you're happy, you click, and I'll pay it for you for being good. And I'm gonna hold my baby. Now, so there's gonna be a lot of little things like this. See where I'm holding the baby, and Charlotte's trying to influence the dog? So what's going to happen, oh, let me change on. Okay, Caroline, very good. What's going to happen is the dog is going to think, well, I'll just go where Stoney is because Stoney's the one with the treats. Stoney's the one that does all the cool stuff. But around here, what we always make the dogs understand is that all access is based on indirect action. So within just a few days of uh, Charlotte and I doing this drill, what's going to happen is this dog is going to notice as soon as I hold this baby, right, I can't directly be get doing stuff with her because I'm holding the baby. So whoever's holding her leash is the one in charge, even though I'm the one that always does the paying. Does that make sense? Right? And so when people come to your house, your dog is going to have a built-in incentive to like be very compliant with all the different people that come to your house to visit the baby. And so you can be in there fool fooling with the baby. And where normally the dog would see that as a net loss. Okay, come on around here. They get, the dog's going to start to look at that as a net positive because when you pick up the baby, the dog's going to look at the little cousin that's over here visiting and be like, hey, you want to go for a walk? Because I've noticed a lot here lately, whenever dad's holding something that looks like a baby, like I get a lot of walks, you know? And so the access through indirect action. The dog is going to start off by trying to make the child happy, so I'll give it something at once. But within just a few repetitions of this, the dog's going to realize oh, wait a minute, what I really want is to go outside and go on a walk while they're all fooling with that baby. So I'll just be really calm, attentive, and polite, catch this young girl's attention, and then she'll probably take me out and walk me, and something good will happen. And I mean, how much total labor am I putting into this? I mean, not much, really, okay? Now, I also want you to understand this. All you dads who watch baby videos, holding a baby is not as easy as it looks, okay? You, might, you know, might not be used to it. You might be a little too rough. Uh, you know, you might back over stuff and fall down. When, when I had my first baby, my, my mother-in-law, uh, she was uh, like <laughs> on the down low trying to tell me not to break the baby, right? So she was like telling me all these things, sending me articles about, what was it, cameraman? Shaking baby. 
shaking baby syndrome, okay? So look, you'll get these little babies and you want to play with them, you know, but you can't play with them like that, okay? You got to play with them real gently, and that can be a little hard. Now look here, you see how this dog, like I started to come this way, and the dog has said, no, you know, I don't, I don't want to do that. Here's the reality, that's gonna happen, okay? That's gonna happen to your wife right after she had a new baby, okay? Do you see how that dog just said she he wasn't gonna go with Charlotte, wherever Charlotte was going? And what did you have to do? I had to pull her. You had to pull her, you had to make her do it, because some things just have to get done, right? Yeah. Okay, was that such a big deal right now? No. Not really, right, okay? Hey, look here, <laughs> it, it, to, for a lady, that is one or two weeks, uh, you know, into having a new baby, just that little bit of effort right there, okay, it's a huge deal. I mean, it's the biggest deal. And you, and you, you guys who, you, you, you know, you, you, your wife hasn't had a baby yet, let me let you in on something. You're going to look at certain things, and you're going to go, well, that's not a big <laughs> That's not a big deal. <laughs> it might not be a big deal to you, but it's a big deal to the new mom, okay? So we're going to prepare the dog for those things. We're going to go ahead and get these battles out of the way. So, for example, the mom or the dad. I was a big exerciser, you know, so I always like to take the stroller. Okay, so This is what I have to have happen, right? And I, it's been so long. Since I had a baby, I didn't have any real size strollers around here, so I had to, to round up these baby doll strollers. But look, I'm gonna come out here and I'm gonna get knock out, I'm gonna knock out a little bit of walking, right? Okay, with this baby doll and this baby stroller getting ready. Okay, and then I'm not just gonna be like, oh hey, I trained a dog and hand the dog to the new mom. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay the preparatory work, okay, and then I'm gonna come out here and I'm gonna help. Okay, <laughs> I'm gonna lose the baby. Runaway okay, baby. runaway baby. Okay, so the mom is gonna take the leash and the stroller. Okay, and we want the moms and the babies and the dogs to all get out, right? Like, don't don't let your wife fall into the trap of thinking that the new baby doesn't need to go outside. You know, you want to socialize your babies just like you socialize your dogs. You want to get them out and have just the, the broadest possible breadth of, of new experiences, okay? So, again, the same thing's going to apply. We're doing it with a little bit with, a, with Caroline here so that, like, we'll be prepared when there's a real baby in play. But Charlotte is going to walk the dog and the baby and she's going to tell the dog when she's happy. And I'm going to reward her. But at some point during all this, since the pace is slower, there's going to be some messing up. Like this right here. Do you see that? Okay. And again, you guys are going to think that's not a big deal. It's not a big deal to you because you didn't just have a baby. But if you just had a baby, it's a huge deal. We're going to knock this out. We're going to knock it out with the baby doll and the baby stroller. And I'm going to let Charlotte... Like make this dog understand that even if Charlotte's busy with the stroller, even if the dad is not right there to micromanage or reward, okay, things still have to get done. A lot of stuff in dog training just boils down to making a decision to get things done and get things done well, okay? And it all, it's all really total training volume, right? Everybody argues about the methods, but the truth is you just got to get out and put in work, okay? Now I heard Charlotte click, so I'm going to come over here. Because this is about how interested dads are. They get off watching this or that or the other. And then every once in a while they're like, oh yeah, I'm supposed to do something. I'm not asking you to be the perfect dad. I'm just asking you to be involved. And I'm asking you to help set your wife up uh, for success. I'm, help, I'm, I'm asking you to be understanding. And understanding that like a lot of the little things that y'all can do. Like with little kids in the neighborhood. Or cousins or aunts and uncles. Or with the mom before she has the baby. Like a lot of this kind of stuff. Look, the dog's tired and said, hey, I don't want to do this. Okay, well guess what? The mom is gonna be tired too because the mom is gonna be trying to walk the dog, okay, after being up all night. So uh, around here we have a saying, you know, life's not fair. So sometimes this dog is gonna be thinking like, well, this isn't fair, we're not going very fast, we're having to stop all the time, we're having to change these diapers. Okay, yeah, we'll get used to it, life ain't fair, right? And now, what else is going on here? Remember, I'm talking about 360 degree wins. The mom is going to be better off. The little baby is going to be better off because it's going to have an awesome dog to grow up with. The dog gets to interact with lots of people. The dad gets to pawn off a little work, right? Okay. But listen, a lot of little children, they don't even have, they don't really like even have like siblings and they don't do much babysitting. So this is also helping Charlotte for when she grows up. It's helping her understand what it's going to be like to have a puppy and a baby and a husband that might or might not help as much as they're supposed to help. Okay, see, she clicked. I'm supposed to be right there to reward, and I was off talking, you know, normal stuff. 
But look, look how simple. Very nice. Now this right here, that right there, that's, we're getting all that out of the way so that Allison, the, the, the girl who owns this dog, she just has a brand new baby, it's two weeks old. Okay, that wasn't a big deal to Charlotte. Charlotte's enjoying this process. She's enjoying helping Allison get ready. Okay, if that was Allison, and that right there, there's the dog just pulls off and goes around. Hey, you're talking complete meltdown tears. Am I lying, cameraman? Yeah. But, well, you guys just wait. You don't believe me? Just wait till your wife has a baby. Okay, you see, you see little things like that and you see a complete shutdown. Now, a lot of times what ends up happening, wait there for a second, a lot of times what ends up happening if the dog's just is pulling a little too much or whatever, the mom will have one breakdown, let's say, okay? And then decide she's just, uh, she's not gonna walk the dog the rest of the week, okay? Remember what I was talking about earlier? Where like dog training, like if you're gonna have trouble with the dog, it really comes from one of three areas or a combination of these three areas, lack of exercise, lack of attention, stress in the household. All those things are present. And if, 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 the, if the mom decides not to fool with the dog or not to exercise the dog, because a little bit of this is happening, then tomorrow the dog is guaranteed to start to attention seek, negative attention seek, okay? And then as the dog starts to aggravate the mom more, the mom's tired because she hasn't been up, uh, because she's been up at, at night, so her threshold for what's aggravating is lower. So the dog is doing more stuff that's aggravating and the mom's threshold for what constitutes aggravating behavior is lower, okay? So those things make the perfect storm Okay, hold on just there for a second. Those things make the perfect storm for an unhappy relationship all the way around. So instead of a 360 degree win, we have a 360 degree uh, stress fest. Does that make sense? Like when that dog was pulling the leash over there, like did you feel like, you know, just stopping and crying? No. No. A little annoyed. It was a little annoyed. <laughs> ha ha. That's the, whole th that's the whole point I'm making. You were a little annoyed. Yeah. Right, okay, because Charlotte wants to look good on the video. She wants to look like she's a good tra dog trainer. Hey, the reality is dog training ain't perfect. If, if dog's perfect, it wouldn't be here anymore, right? She was a little annoyed. A little annoyed for a mom, a new mom, is a lot annoyed. Does that make sense? You've heard the saying, uh, happy wife, happy life. Okay, a little annoyance with the dog, especially probably the dog that you <laughs> had a, you know, big part in picking. A little annoyance with that dog, it translates to a lot of annoyance in the house and nobody's going to be happy. So we can have, choose to have a 360 degree win or we can choose to have a 360 degree loss. Okay, and it's really up to you guys. So get out and put some work in and like, uh, you know, uh, be prepared. Now I have one more dog to work. And um, we'll show you how, like with Allison, there was a kind of a weird thing. She had, a, she had the, the, a young puppy and a baby at exactly the same time. But I have another dog here. The baby's coming a little bit later. And so we're gonna talk about some specific things you can do uh, and uh, um, some uh, expectations that are gonna be a little different because the type of dog is different. Okay, this is a, a Labrador Retriever, charcoal Labrador Retriever. Now keep your hateful comments to yourself, okay? It's a new mom's dog, right? And I'm gonna bring out a German short hair pointer and we're gonna talk about like mm, some adjustments that have to be made in terms of our expectations. Okay, so listen, we went in and got a different kind of dog to illustrate a super important point. Uh, dog trainers oftentimes, uh, they overstate uh, like their ability to influence a dog, right? Like, I, you know, I like labs. You'll see, you know, dog trainers with uh, various types of herding dogs. Those, uh, those dogs are all easy to influence. Uh, Josie May is a... Um, German short hair pointer. German short hair pointer. Okay, around here we call German short hair pointers part of the Southern Living Young Family Starter Pack because <laughs> they look good. You know, you get you a nice little house and you get dressed up and you have a baby and a stroller and a German short hair pointer. It looks great in a picture. Okay, but there's a big difference between <laughs> taking one picture, which so a lot of times if you see a dog like that in a picture, uh, that picture probably took 30 minutes to take to get them to sit still. Uh, but anyway, it's, it's just a lot of difference in managing different kinds of dogs. And like, uh, so we're going to walk Josie May a little bit. Now, Josie May has been here exactly as long as Juniper. Uh, but like you'll notice she's still impulsive. She's still looking away. You know, she still kind of looks sometimes uh, a little bit like downtrodden if you force her to be on a leash for too long. Okay, so Charlotte, go ahead and try to walk Josie May. All right, and we're going to kind of do the same rules. Now, this time you'll notice in the background I'm holding a uh, notebook, okay? I think it's imperative if you have dogs that aren't bred to do a job in close conjunction with a handler, uh, 
to go out and document the results of your exercise sessions, okay? And so what I mean by that is that like whenever I go out with Josie Mae, I need to know exactly how far that I have to run her or how far that I have to, to bicycle with her or how far I have to let her go and chase birds, okay, to have a given behavioral effect, okay? You'll hear me say all the times that tired dogs are good dogs, okay? But tired dogs are only good dogs, right? If, um, that's put into practice in real life, okay? So let's say, for example, you know, the young mom with the baby wants to take the German short hair pointer out uh, for a little stroller walk. You know, she wants to show off her fancy stroller. She wants to show off the fact that she's walking off her baby weight. She wants to show off her nice dog, okay? If you want to be a good husband, you're going to open up your notebook and you're going to say, oh, to make Josie May... <laughs> Be careful with Caroline. <laughs> hey, to, you're going to say, hey, to make my wife look good on this walk with the, uh, with the dog, uh, it seems like last week I had to run her 4.6 miles. You know, I ran her 4.6 on Tuesday, 3.7 on Friday. It was this, this, it was this temperature. It was this humidity. Okay, so you want your notebook so that when your wife tells you she plans on taking the dog for a walk, right, you know exactly what you need to do to make that walk successful, okay? There's no amount of training. I don't care about the methodology. You wanna be a clicker trainer, you wanna be a traditional leash and collar trainer, you wanna be, you wanna use the electric collars, whatever. There's no amount of just like training, like if you wanna think about it that way, that's gonna influence that German short hair pointer to be really good with a, a new mom, okay? What we need to do is we need to manage the dog in such a way that being good comes natural. Okay, we're gonna make sure that we get the dog out and we have a really good breakdown of how much we exercise the dog to have the desired effect. Now the desired effect <laughs> is that we want the dog to be able to go out and walk with style and be happy and upbeat when it comes in contact with the other neighborhood children, okay? But not so full of energy that it pulls on the leash or gives the mom a hard time. Okay? And again, I do not particularly care about the methodology here. I care about the energy regulation practices. If you regulate the energy properly, anybody can walk these German short hair pointers. And if you don't regulate the energy properly, and you just try to tell them, oh, look, if she does this, then you do that. Guys, listen, that is a recipe for failure, right? Because a new mom, she's being bombarded with information related to if you do this, that'll happen, and none of it's working, okay? And so when you, <laughs> you're like, here, take this crazy high-strung uh, hunting bred German short hair pointer and take it for a walk with your stroller, okay? And all you have to do if she goes to, to pulling is do this with your food or do this with your leash and collar or whatever. <laughs> Guaranteed going to be breakdown city. Just even that little thing right there is breakdown city. Okay, and I'm trying to teach you how to avoid breakdown city. Notebook. Now the notebook is to hold you accountable so that your wife, when she comes in from walking the baby, she can say, "Did you exercise the dog?" And of course you're going to lie. You go, "Oh yeah, I did." She can open that up. She th <laughs> she thumbed down here to page six, and she could she could be like. Right here, did you take the dog to the reservoir and do 2.7 miles? And you're like, no, nah, I took it in the backyard and played ball with it. You know, like, and it held, held you accountable, okay? And accountability is a big thing when you're working with the dog and you're trying to help the dog, you know, fit into, you know, the new household, uh, like, uh, reality. Okay, that's far enough, Charlotte. You got to be accountable, you know what I'm saying? And you got to help this new mom. You got to help her, you got to help her get by. And you got to be ready for unreasonableness. Okay, because there's just a certain amount of unreasonableness that comes with being a new mom. And if you can do a good job of early training and you can do a really good job of uh, energy regulation, then you're going to be successful. Okay, you're going to have a mom that has got the, the, the American dream, right? She's got her nice little house. She's got her nice new baby. And she's got a dog that loves the baby and uh, it's fun to take for a walk. Okay, and every day when the mom is feeling stressed about something not going right with the baby, then she can at least reach over there and pet that dog and know that everything things going right with the dog and then when you get home from work she's super happy with you because you're doing your part you're pulling your weight okay so last thing I told you I was gonna give you a little pro tip here uh, here Charlotte come over here okay so this is that pro tip I was gonna tell you about okay so now so what I've told you about is like how to get the dog to be good for your wife and new baby 
Let me tell you something that works really, really well, okay? And I used to catch a lot of flack because all the ladies that used to come out here. But when I first started my kennel, like uh, I had uh, my oldest son, Nicholas, the one in the army now, but like, uh, you know, and I didn't have anybody really working for me. And so I had to manage the whole kennel. My wife worked, uh, we were just broke, you know? And uh, so I had the baby all day, every day. And uh, I had to, get a lot of, had to get a lot of stuff done. And here is the simplest and fastest way to take a fussy baby and get them to relax and go to sleep. You get you a nice car seat and a couple of ratchet straps. <laughs> and you ratchet strap the car seat to the four-wheeler. Now, listen, my wife is back there saying, Stoney, don't put this on YouTube. I'm telling you the truth. It's perfectly safe. I mean, how are you going to turn your four-wheeler over or do anything wrong riding around your yard, right? And as soon as you turn this four-wheeler on, you know how it is to take a baby for a ride in a car, right? Just turn the four-wheeler on and uh, take off riding and just ride them around. Hey, they will immediately calm down and go to sleep. I mean, it works perfectly. Now, you know, I don't know if your wife is going to let you strap a car seat to your four-wheeler. You know, uh, I'm just telling you that tell her Uncle Stoney said it was okay. And whenever, like, uh, your wife needs a break, okay, you can just jump on your four-wheeler, strap the car seat in, ride down the road to see your buddies. And again, what are we always getting back to? 360 degree winds, right? Your wife gets a little break, the baby gets to uh, have, take a little nap, and you get to go hang out with your buddies and look like a rock star dad. All right, I'll see you guys next week.